So yeah, Dad, Mum, Mumser, and you were married before. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And you and Mumser had two daughters. Do you remember them? So India is one of them. Yeah, and then I was your second daughter. Yeah, I'm your Baba. Who's what guy? This guy. That guy is you. Is it? That's you and me, Dad. You and me? Yeah, me and you, you and me, the best team ever. Oh, Dad. I've often wondered what life would be like after you're gone. Taking care of you has become my identity, my raison d'etre. I've thought obsessively about what will happen to me when you move on to conquer the next world. How will we stay connected on an intergalactic level? How will I survive without you? But here we are our spirit being tested for the 500th time, now not by dementia, but by COVID-19. Yet I feel more connected to you than ever before. It's been an important lesson for me, knowing that no matter where you are, you're here with me still, in my blood, in my mind, in my heart. I felt intense guilt on the odd days that I couldn't see you, but this enforced separation has taught me that you're okay without me. And though it hurts to the core, ultimately, I'm okay without you. Because you're everywhere. You're blethering, Dad. I'm blethering. <laughs> I could feel sorry for myself, how cruel it is to keep us apart after five years by each other's side. I've only recently come to terms with you being in a nursing home at all. That process of separation was excruciating enough. I stick to all this comes back to me. I know. Magic. It is magic. Summer's ends around the bend just but perhaps you need a holiday from my green smoothies, cringy dancing, and my constant chirping about your bedside. I can't allow myself to think about the possibility of this virus getting you. I have no choice but to trust the carers in your home, who despite the incredible obstacles COVID-19 has flung at them, are keeping you safe. I'm trying to use this abundance of time wisely, reading more, thinking more, creating more. Getting lost in work has helped me pass the darker days. When the weather's nice, I sit out on Penrose Street the way we used to. I open the window and let your records flow out for the neighbors to hear. Anne next door says she misses your music. I didn't have the heart to tell you, but we lost John Prine to the virus, Dad. I've been playing his albums on repeat like you used to when I was a kid. It's as if you're both here with me. Summer's End gets me every time. Life's good, isn't it? My memory has come back too, perhaps something to do with this slower pace of life, surrendering to what's out of my control and trying to be present. And being drip fed memories I thought had slipped away forever. Like begging you to drop me to school on the Moto Guzzi, how important it was to 10 year old me for everyone to see me on the back of your giant motorcycle. The pride I felt that day, Dad. I remember the teddy bear picnics you curated in the garden. Big extravagant weddings, bunny brides and Pinocchio grooms, followed by plowman sambos. I made one of those the other day. 
I could actually taste the memory. Branston pickle and cheese cut too thick. To think I hated it back then. Other delights like Heinz beans on toast with the side of the Simpsons. Chalk ices in the back of the car with the fear of it dripping all over your upholstery. It's a dog's world now, Dad. Mr. Blue doesn't know what he's done to deserve so much attention. He gave me a big scare on St. Patrick's Day. The vet told me he's showing signs of canine dementia. I cried and laughed at the same time. What a cruel trick the world is playing on me. They do say dogs mimic their owners. Like father, like son, I suppose, Dad. Peas in a pod, you and our boy Blue. I cycled down a desolate Grafton Street the other day, the outer edge of my two kilometer confines. I stood outside Bruxelles to catch my breath, remembering fondly our hot whiskies and poetic ramblings, your obscure take on the mundane and vast knowledge of things beyond the concern of most ordinary folk. I read that they filled in the skate ramps at Venice Beach, millions of grains of sand preventing the dudes of Dogtown from spreading this virus through their radical skating. Made me think of our promenades down the boardwalk, greasy pizza and sandy socks, skinny malink you awed by the bodybuilders of Muscle Beach. Awesome, dude. What I'd give to be back in LA with you. We'll reminisce when I see you again, Dad. We'll sit out in the garden with the sun on our faces and we'll pretend we're there like the good old days. In the quarantine meantime, I'll quote Van the Man. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. I'll take what I can get and I won't complain. I love you always, Doodlebug.